welcome to the second episode of the Non-Dual Food Truck. We are your hosts, Alan Shelton and Ron Ario, and today we have a special guest, Prasad. <clears throat> and let me tell you a little bit about Prasad. Prasad Paul Duffy, uh, better known as Prasad, is a non-dualist, spiritual teacher who has awakened to his true self through the grace of his teachers, H.W.L. Punja, or more popularly known as Papaji, and Sri Ramana Maharshi. Prasad is the author of the book, Dancing as the Infinite, The Freedom of Our True Self, and was the co-founder of the Source Spiritual Center in Los Angeles. For over 30 years in private sessions, workshops, and retreats, Prasad has helped thousands of people to wake up to who they truly are and transform them, their lives. So Prasad has written a new book, called You Are Love, and we're going to get into that today. And Alan's known him for more than 25 years, Alan. So I, I, I have. I love that intro. It's a beautiful intro. But the, the thing you need to understand probably in, in addition to that is that I've known Prasad, uh, you know, in, in a very personal way for a lot of years. And so when you're dealing with Prasad, all of what we just heard is true and beautiful. But what's really the, the thing about Prasad, if you've been with him for years and years, is just how he relates to people and how his heart is. So so as we do this, you'll probably see glimpses of both the greatness of Prasad as though we could write it in a bio and the actual normalness of Prasad in the way that he relates to human beings, which is the part that, you know, when, when I hear that, I love it, don't get me wrong, but but Prasad to me is just, is has been a friend of mine and, and, and more than a friend. Um, he was He was my entry into... Um, from Osho into actually uh, the non-dual world. Um, the first time I ever got that we were living a story, um, I, I remember walking around, away from the first satsang that I went to with Prasad going, holy shit. You know, like I, it just, it was, it was like there was a moment where I knew that the next part of my journey had begun. And it was in that very first one. I was on fire when I, when I got home. My mind was just ripping because it, 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 what he said and what he worked with rendered everything in a way that had never, ever been revealed before. And so, of course, you can imagine how, how I feel about this. And then when I engaged with him, he even lived with me for a while at, at our place. So, so this relationship that looked holy and wonderful, which it was, um, really was one that was incredibly nourishing on the, uh, on the ground. And so I just want people to see that about him as well, because it's just a it, to me, it's like it's just this is just pure heart food. You know, this is this is this is better than tacos. So, um, so that that's the part that to me is cool about Prasad. So, well, you wanna you wanna launch right into your book, Prasad. You know, we can ask you um, <clears throat> what your inspiration was to write that book. Um, the book came from my second trip to India. So my I was fresh off my first trip to India when I met. Alan and Justine, yep. and I was sharing satsang, uh, very inspired by Papaji, my guru. Uh, basically, it felt almost like I was channeling him. And my mother even came to one satsang. She says, why are you talking like Papaji? <laughs> <laughs> and so that was a very <clears throat> pure time. And Alan, we have videos from them in storage. I'm going to digitize some. Oh, that that'd be period. awesome. Oh, my God. Because it was a very pure time. And just like Bob Dylan wrote those amazing songs in his youth, I saw an interview with him recently, and he was like, he could never write those songs now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I knew when that was happening to this form that I was on a wave, almost like a satsang rock star, you know, there was a yeah, vibe. Yeah. Not quite like Osho, because no. he's like one of those rock stars who took themselves too seriously and True. then crashed and burned, yeah. you know, it happens to big stars. Yeah. But uh, I rode that wave and got to meet beautiful people like Alan and Justine. And then I walked away from it. Uh, and as you said recently, when we talked, Alan, it surprised you because it was still money on the table. The fact that you said <laughs> that made me laugh. But I walked away from it. The idea of being a guru or, you know, uh, even though I went to like 12 cities a year, four times a year, I had a tour. But I walked away from it because I didn't want to get stuck in that identity. Yeah. So... You know, you talk about the bio and how the bio can't contain me. Well, yeah. that's because I'm beyond identity. Yeah. 
I'm beyond anybody, somebody, I'm nobody. Uh, in fact, in my book, there's a chapter called The Freedom to Be Nobody. Uh, in my book, You Are Love. And so I walked away from the whole formal teaching scene that someone like Muji has really become popular in. Yep. Um, also from Papa G. And I explored uh, writing and uh, traveling and uh, running a church that uh, yeah, yeah. in Venice Beach that Alan came and gave a talk at and uh, so much more. Playwright in New York, uh, you know, and counseling, counseling individual, those who were fortunate or unfortunate, depending on how they looked at it, to pass cross with Prasad, you know? Yeah. Once you do, it's like there's a kind of an agreement that happens, and until you run away, you're in the fire. Well, well that's interesting because I think you know, in a way, you were the pioneer on that score because we all shaped ourselves. Being with Osho and then Ramesh Balsakar, you know, there was a way that it was, right? And your your sot songs fit right into that way that it was. But, you know, I've always been a corporate dude. I'm not, I'm not really, uh, uh, I don't do the guru thing very well. It's not what I do. And I'm also very street. That's, that's why we do non-dual food truck. We wanted to set spirituality in a place where it was on the ground and real. And in a way, I think what you did gave a lot of us um, pause, and it also gave us uh, a moment to go, well, wait a minute, you know? I always tell the story about Jonah and the whale and how, as a corporate guy, no matter what I did, I keep getting burped up on the corporate beach, no matter, you know, because that's how this particular body, mind, its story happens that way. And, and I think in a certain way, I'm, I'm, and not in a certain way, in a real way, the um, you know your your break when you broke from doing Sot Song and went to L.A., you know Prasad goes to L.A. to do movies and such. And I've been in Southern California my whole life, and I'm like going, you know, that's that that's like that's like owning the racetrack and then deciding the next day to bet on a dead horse. I'm like going, you know, there's a real contrast here. You know, like people that go and do that stuff in Hollywood. I got a newsflash for you: most of them don't don't get anything. They don't make any money. They, nobody ever hears of them. I mean, you talk about you talk about going from this amazing place, but in a way, it, it, not in a way, but in 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 real terms, it was who, it was the dance that Prasad was going to do in the world, and he kind of in, in today's environment. Right, the guru thing's gone, and and what you and I have in in essence done by just being who we are, that's the new that's the new path that people look at and go, oh, I I don't want to be a guru. I don't want to sit in a room with a microphone and have and 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 dress up all nice and shower and crap. I want to just have the conversation, and 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 with whoever whoever will engage them in the conversation that magnetizes them. And I think that's I, I think for me, you know, when you when you bounced like that, it was like the magnetization actually increased. It was like now now it was now it's like okay, this that move was an incredible move. I think in terms of magnetizing people, who who had engaged with you, and now we're looking at what going on. Wonder what's next, right? Because anything could be next, right? And and isn't it like a severe earnestness that wants to escape identity? Yeah. You know what I mean? That's right. And, and, and just cutting off like that just showed how earnest you yep. were in that yep. process yep. Um, to not be encapsulated in any way, yep. shape, or form. Because yep. that, that's a huge breakaway. Well, and the, and the comment I made about him leaving money on the table, I mean, I, I'm a corporate dude. I mean, the man walks away from this thriving thing to go hang in L.A. and do movies but and plays, you know. Ultimately, ultimately, I don't know if I ever told you this, Alan, but I went to do the Hollywood thing as an experiment uh, to see whether I could manifest a particular goal, because I had already given up everything. I was in that place of surrender and retirement, retiring from the world and, and also sharing satsang. And so that was the experiment, but the universe kicked my ass because I chose a very competitive, yep. difficult, yep. ruthless yep. industry. Yep. And, uh, but I was bringing myself to it. And then I became like those people for a while to play the game. Just like, in, you know, if you're playing football, you got to yep. bulk up. Um, and so, but I didn't like that either. And, uh, but the truth is I'm on it again. I just wrote a screenplay and I've just been sending it out to the different well, people I meet from a whole different perspective, yep. from non-attachment, 
from vision, yep. with no ego, the way the ego rose. And I got to look at it. The ego who has a dream. Anyone who's listening now, it's great to follow your dream in life as long as you know it's a dream. Yep. Yep. So my if you believe it's real, you will be fucked. Yep. Well, because it, it will chase you. You will chase it outside of your own self, thinking that it's bringing you to yourself. And that's worse when yep. you get lost and you think you're going in the right direction. You yep. go a lot further in the wrong direction, <laughs> don't you? When you in, think you're going uh, in the right no, direction. No, absolutely Whereas if true. you know you're lost, you, you kind of uh, like are cautious about which direction you right. go. But if you think this is the way yep. and you get you're, very you're lost. screwed. Yeah. Well, what's I did have a proud moment, I want to say. So Prasad did this uh, pilot for a series that he was going to do, and I got mm. a copy of it, and my book was in it, Awakened Leadership. I was so excited yeah. about that because, you know, yeah, I, yeah I, it was just— It it's was just, called Deprogrammed, yeah. and it's a, about a comedy about a rehab for religious fanatics. Right. You it's know, you great. got the Krishna, you got the Amish, you got yep. the born again Christian, you got the Muslim. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and Billy McNamara, who used to be a movie star until he got canceled uh, years ago, um, he played the therapist and he was reading Alan's yep. book in bed. Yeah. It was awesome. It was great product it was awesome. placement. Yeah, it was. But I wanted to address your uh, question, bring it back, uh, Ron, for a moment to say with the book, You All Love, that came out of my second trip to India, which was post Hollywood, post rock and roll music, managing bands. I forgot to mention that. Yep. Remember that? That's Freedom right. Tribe yeah, Freedom Tribe. Yeah, Freedom Tribe. Freedom mm -hmm. Tribe. Yeah, yeah. What a life Prasad has led yeah. from the awakened state, knowing yeah. full well that I am not the identity who's having yeah. this experience. Yeah. It's, it's a dream, you know? And so when I was in India in 2018, uh, 2019, I finally made it back to, no, to India after 25 years, but it was my first trip to Arunachala. Oh, nice. And when I was sitting in the cave of Ramana Maharshi, yeah. where he woke up, I got the message, you can't help anyone awaken. So that was it. I was I got my pink slip. Yep. I was done. It fired. There was no more pretense of me sitting in front of the room or giving guidance to yep. someone to, to, to help them awaken. No, all I could do is be awake. Yep. Be so fully goddamn awake that those who are on that precipice are drawn to the energy and they fall into it on their own accord. And I'm just enjoying a good time with a beautiful soul. But all the rest of the people, the needy, lost, depressed, woke <laughs> human beings who are chasing some idea of spirituality yep. that does not exist. Yep. Those people, I don't have any more use for anymore. I can't help them. But those who are living a simple life in nature, loving each other, being love, those are the ones who already are awake. And yep. so I can mirror with them. And I don't have to be challenged. I don't have to defend. I don't have to be codependent. That's, Do you get what I'm saying, Ron? That's an amazing. <laughs> that's beautiful. You know, I got to tell you, I read the book, and when yeah. I when I first read it, um, I thought, "Wow, this is not a non-dual book." You know, like the first chapter, because you, you're you're yeah. talking about relationships, and I I couldn't see any yeah. any non-duality in it. But it's so nuanced. It's so nuanced from the first chapter into the last chapter, where you you fully make it really clear you're nobody but in the process you go through the intricacies and the nuances of relationship and how 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 you can practice you know be practical in maintaining good human relations <clears throat> but as the chapters evolved you i think in the middle of the book you you came into self-inquiry and then that was just a a, a move away from a relationship and then by the end of the book you were nothing so i i really felt it was so articulate with um how how it was just the shades how they changed so very eloquently and and very fine and and, and how it just evolved into non-duality i thought that was a, a great journey that's fantastic 
I, for me, it was inspired in India and I wrote it in the jungles of Thailand and finished it in the jungles of Costa Rica. And I wanted to write a book. My other books were basically spoken word from the satsang right. that were recorded and That's edited. Right. Yep. This I channeled and wrote as a book with the skills that I've learned to write other format. And uh, I wrote it with the intention for people who aren't in relationship, who are feeling lonely or sad or depressed. Um, and it was, it's a guide to self-love. So the first half is all about self-love, but once you realize you love yourself and there is only the self, then the second half happens, the awakening. Yep. But there are people, I think, Ron, who read that book who didn't get the second half because they were attracted to the first half. And then some people like you who resonate with the second half takes, luckily you stuck with it to get there. So I, it's one of those uh, art forms where I've mixed, it's a hybrid and that's a risk you take. But I was hoping to bring some of those codependent relationship addicts into satsang through their journey of self-love. That's what that book was for. Beautiful. Is, has, has, you are love. It's called has, has, you are love. Has that worked? Has has have you seen a shift in in who it is that you're that you're engaging with as a result of 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 how you rolled through that book? Seen a shift of engaging with pe other people. Yeah, in other words, I, another, yeah, in other words, the kind of yeah. people you're talking yes, to must be. I, I, I would engage think they, with them less. Okay, I engage with humans less uh -huh. than when I knew you, mm -hmm. much less. Um. Uh, this past summer, I went on a tour to my ex-girlfriends um, to connect. I told you they were turning 80 this year. Yeah. One was a spiritual teacher. The other one had been with Papaji. The other one is psychic. All these remarkable women I had been with over the years in their 80s. And I, in my innocence, wanted to go visit them because they're winding down their time here. And two out of the three visits turned into them flip, flipping out and throwing me out. Wow. Like they had to relive something from the past as closure or something. But meanwhile, since I'm nobody, it didn't touch me. I even played the role a little bit. Oh, why are you doing this? Why? <laughs> you sure you want to do this? We've been friends for 30 years, you know? <laughs> but nope, the universe cleansed that out. So I don't believe in relationship anymore. There's yeah. only the self. Who yeah. am I talking to? I'm fucking talking to a computer and these, these two old guys on the other side of it, yeah. you know, real reflections of myself. <laughs> we're three elder white guys. <laughs> exactly. you know? I love this. We're, we, we, we can relate to our journeys. We've yep. lived the same a period of time. I mean, trying to relate to the current youth uh, is so difficult because of the way they've been programmed. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking millennials. I'm talking whatever. No, the next generation. That. Yeah, exactly. Generation Z yeah. or whatever the fuck yeah. they want to label the woke. The woke generation. The, but but yeah. haven't older guys always had a problem with the youth? I mean, even for for hundreds of years, right? I mean, hasn't the youth always presented a problem to older people? Yeah, I think it's a way that they replace us. You know, there's a huge ageism going on. There is so much more compassion for transgender people, which is a very, very small percentage of the population, than there are for elders. Elder abuse during COVID, it's the elders who who got killed, basically, you know, who died. Yep, they died. And, uh -huh. uh, you know, uh, the way people are prejudiced towards older people in Hollywood, they're that way. Even as spiritual teachers, you would think that at our age, Alan, we've got more wisdom than ever. And people would treat us with real reverence and respect. And certain people who are awake do. When I'm in India, I get treated that way. Yes. But the majority of the idiots who live in the U.S. and the West, they don't even recognize that higher vibration anymore because they're so lost in their own mind. And a bunch of them think they're teachers already when they're millennials. So yeah. they're running around teaching when they're not even cooked yet. Yep. You know, it's funny, Alan and I, were, we were just talking about this today. 
before the podcast, we were sitting down and I was reflecting because my mother's getting older and my wife's from the Philippines. And the nuclear family in the Philippines is really tight and they take care of the older people. Uh, they, yeah. have, they have reverence for the older people. And I was just reflecting on the fact that so many older people in the United States simply live alone. And they, they're on their own accord, and they have to take care of themselves. There's nobody to take care of them. Or, or even worse, nursing homes. Yes, yep. yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And we them out to nursing homes, and yep. then when there's too many of them, <laughs> kill them off. Yeah. Andrew I, Cuomo. I, yeah, I have, a picture of the, I, I have a picture of the eagles sitting in their nursing home. You know, you can check out any time you like, but you can never leave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I want to congratulate you guys on your podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Um, podcasts seem to be the thing. I have my podcast mic, so my next thing would be to do a podcast. Yep. But I, I love Russell Brand's podcast. Yep. And I and the guests that he has too. And I love uh, uh, the impact that Joe Rogan has yep. on his podcast. But I yep. don't listen to him. Or someone even like Alex Jones or David Icke or mm -hmm. Robert Kennedy, although it's hard to listen to him. Robert Kennedy's a tough listen. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, but all of those people, that seems to be what it is right now. But where are the spiritual leader podcasts? Like if Alan Watts was alive today, he'd have a podcast. Yep. You know? Yep. Uh, they love him. They're looking for it. They've got you know, Muji on uh, YouTube, he doesn't have a podcast, but, you know, there's ways for spiritual uh, seekers to find teachers on uh, in the internet, but then you have someone like um, uh, Sadhguru, and, you know, what's his value? Yep. He's super popular, but does he have any value as a true teacher? And I'd be interested to talk to you about this, Ron, as well. We talked a little bit in the pre-production about this, but just what makes a true teacher? If anyone's listening is looking for a teacher, how do you discern that, uh, you know? Didn't well, you have a little story around that? Well, I got to tell you, um, I've had teachers, and um, Alan's been the most pure teacher that I've come across. Um, oh, yes, that was it. Mm. Yeah, he, he's been the most pure teacher. I've had previous teachers that were really um, embroiled in their own ego. And, um, but when you don't know the difference as a student, then you just, you just kind of follow, you kind of follow. And it leads you to wherever yeah. you go. But um, when, I, when Alan and I started communicating, um, there was no pretense of ego anywhere. And, um, and I just felt that purity and I was really drawn to that. And I, I just think that's the best formula for a teacher. Yeah, I, you know, it's funny when I look at no it. No teacher, no student. Exactly. The best way for there to be no ego for yep. the teacher yep. is no teacher, no student. You yep. don't identify with the role. Again, like I said earlier, I have realized it's about being fully awake myself. And then somebody finds me, wants guidance. I've gone up the mountain. They're, they're going up yep. the mountain. I can give them the shortcut if they want. But it's the, the idea that anyone is not awake is not truth. Yes. Yeah. Yes. There's well, only awakeness. There's only awareness. Everything else is the illusion of duality. So as I, long as we rest in that oneness, it doesn't matter what, whatever the fuck you do. There is no spirituality. There are no ethics. There are no morality. There's nothing. There's no rules because there's no duality. Without duality, there's no morality. But you can't just wake up and, and come to this realization without doing all the work on your ego first, because if not, then the ego takes advantage of that realization okay. and misuses it or abuses power. Osho was one of them. Osho's ego must have risen during the trips. Something happened where he got cloudy and uh, deluded. It can happen. Look at what's his other name, Adida. The other guy, oh, yeah, Adida, Adida yep. Joffrey John, yep. deluded. Yep. Okay, yep. I like talking about gurus, Ron. If you want to, yeah, <laughs> watching gurus become well, deluded it, is like unbelievable. Go, or like ministers or priests. Go ahead. And, well, and part of it's in the simplicity, Prasad. If you think about it, like so, 
So I'll run into someone who's a spiritual teacher and they'll start laying out the map of spirituality. And, oh, my God, there's a lot of things in it. You know what I'm saying? There's like like they talk about non-dual states of consciousness and all of this kind of stuff, you know. And, and so, so my, you know, my, my journey and I think your journey was it was pretty simple. I mean, Papa G was kind of like be quiet and come to pop, you know, go to satsang. You know, my teacher was, you know, Ramesh was and Nisargadatta was like, Dude, all there is is consciousness, right? So, so these these really incredible, simple messages are coming through. And what happens is that within the process, when you're doing all that ego work, it, it instead of launching into a whole bunch of detail and layers and this and that, because then you're just doing more ego. So the answer to ego is more ego in a lot of teachers' situations. And you can almost sniff it out when you start to sniff out how complex it is. Um, I saw I saw a post the other day, some guy who's living in perfect consciousness, who talked about it for five and a half hours, and 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 I could have I could have almost done a spiritual encyclopedia with all the terms and kinds of maps and this and that and the other, and 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 you you almost sniff it out the minute you start to see that complexity, because because being there's no complexity in nothing, there's no complexity in nothing, there just isn't, and 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 yes you have to move through the complexity of who you are as an ego that you think you are as you as you as you you know move through the journey but the complexity doesn't get you know moved outside you're not moving into a new complexity i got to get rid of the old complexity and give me a new version of it but that seems to be what's on offer when you look when you look at a lot of the spiritual teachers today and even non-duality if you've noticed this prasad but holy cow non-duality like, like you know you could be making a breakfast cereal and you have a non-dual advisor I mean, everybody has a non-dual advisor for whatever the heck it is they're doing, and I just find that incredibly humorous. You know, like like you know, I'm 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 the new Kellogg's, and you know, I got a non-dual advisor to tell me how, what how much sugar to put on the fucking cereal. I don't know, but but it's just it's just that non-dual has is now right now as we move along, is being kind of lifted and applied to everything, and I and I predict that non-dual is going to become the most confusing concept on it's, it's almost like enlightenment used to be remember you talk about enlightenment oh my god what a muddied up concept that is i think non-duality is the next muddied up concept if you look at what's going on everybody's got somebody who's non-dual for some reason or another in their organizations their deliveries whatever it is that they're doing in the dream so non-duality is now a big part of the dream and it, and and in, and in your and my time it was really simple I mean, you know, and and that's what's lovely. You and I, you have, have always used the term. It, it, it's it's the uh, you know the Hindu term, which is Advaita, and and what's beautiful about Advaita is no one's no one has adopted that and started placing it, you know, for product product review or anything. But but non duality, I, I it's the next one. It's the next one that's going. Everybody's well, going to be using it. Advaita means non duality. Exactly. Course, same right? same. But what's nice is when you say it and hear it, 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 it still is kind of a refuge. You know, it's the simplicity. It's just the simplicity of being nothing. It's the recognition that what this is is simply a dream that's living itself and, and who you are. Or being everything, too. Exactly. You know, it's like it's yep. the self. Yep. And for those listening to understand that it's the self, yep. Atman, yep. there's only self. That's the basic teaching right. of non-dual Advaita Vedanta. Yep. Mm -hmm. There's only the self, and everything is a reflection of that. Now, you said this guy with perfect consciousness, you yes. know? Yes, yes. Could you imagine if you read that in my bio? Put it in. Put it in. That's actually, uh, it's true. <laughs> and it is true. And everybody <coughs> has perfect consciousness. Exactly. That's the nature of consciousness. That's what it is. Yeah. But then you have thoughts. And your thoughts, what's cool about thoughts is everyone's are unique. Yep. There are similar patterns and styles, but just like fingerprints, your thoughts are unique to you depending on all of your past moments leading up to this. Now, if you're thought free, the past doesn't touch you. That's the doorway to freedom that Papa G's pointing to, that I'm talking about, that non-dual covers basically as a general term is that we are untouched by that which comes and goes. That which comes and goes is temporary. We are eternal. Is eternal the opposite of temporary? Is that part of duality? No, eternal is absolute nothingness. 
in which everything rises and falls. Yep. Yep. So it's not, if you begin to define the emptiness of who we truly are, the pure, absolute, perfect consciousness that we are, if you define it as the opposite of being asleep, yep. awake versus asleep, now you're in duality. So that's an example for the listener to see. You, that's the, what you don't do. Yep. Non-dual, it's a strange word because it's a negative. It Right. So some people say oneness, but it's not even oneness. It's zero. That's the beautiful thing. When you really wake up at first, you think it's oneness. We're all connected in the oneness. But no, the oneness immediately goes to the two-ness. Yep. Because oneness is something. And then there is an other reflecting that something. But zero is who we are. We're all just big zeros. And that's it. You don't add anything to it, right, Alex? Well, I, I have a po- I have a pointer I use, and I call it multiply by zero. That awakening, yeah. and, uh, you can take any number you'd like that lives in duality and multiply it by zero, and guess what happens? So so what non-duality is, the big multiplier of zero, right? You, you multiply it by zero, it's zero. So what I laugh at, when I laugh, because when you say, who am I, and people start to describe what this individual self is, well, they don't fucking know. They're just kind of building it as we go. and But the one thing they've never done is taken all of that crap in their equation and then multiplied it by zero because it's in there. you know. So they never get there. So, they, they, so what we do is we build this model of who we are and then we believe that that's what's afoot around us and we identify it with, and guess what? Now, now we're just like every other ego. But it, within that ego, there's nothing there. You multiply zero, it's gone. And that's the revelation. That's the revealing that... You know, I guess only a business guy would think of that, right? Multiply it by zero, see what happens. Divide it by zero, see what happens. <laughs> Prasad, I, I have a question. So, um, Papaji, can you share a little of your experience with Papaji? Because I got to tell you, I think we talked about this last time we talked, but you know, I, I've watched Papaji, and uh, my wife has watched it with me. And when he laughs and giggles, my my wife cannot stop giggling. I mean, he's just got this energy Infectious. that comes out that's yeah. just really, really vulnerable and pure. And how would, can you relate your experience, um, how that was for you, please? Yeah, I, I've been watching some Papa G videos recently um, as a kind of uh, memory. And it throws me right back into stillness just seeing him and alan didn't get to see papaji but no. you were with ramesh yep. right yep but not nisagadatta no no he died so in 81. i would go on to say that nisagadatta and papaji were probably the two greatest non-dual awakened masters of the 20th century I mean, not 20th century, of the beginning of the 21st century, whatever it was, the late, the end of the 20th yeah, century. Yeah, the last part. Because I'm not including Ramana yeah. and Yogananda yeah. and all of those, you know. And actually, Papaji's uncle was Ram Tirtha. Um, but there was something about Papaji that was so vital and alive underneath that childlike energy that that childlike energy and laughter and everything was like meaningless, but it kept our egos entertained. He would make up, he would read people's letters and change the words around and make up their stories in some <laughs> way that would leave their egos completely like in a puddle of humiliation. Uh, and we'd all be laughing. And it was a very powerful device that he would do. But it was an indication of how he just did not give any credence to anybody's story at all. But he looked like he did as an old grandfather who was laughing and giggling. I'm not saying that was an act. I'm saying that that was a device the same way you had Nisigadatta with smoking the biddies and talking yeah. crazy. I'm a, yeah. a biddy salesman. Yeah. I'm some crazy old, <laughs> yeah. you know. Well, if you saw him, you'd be like, who's that crazy guy oh, talking yeah. and screaming, yeah, yeah. you know? And so with Papaji, he played that kind of silly um, 
playful clown, which I love to do. I think I picked it up from him, but it's my <coughs> nature too. Yeah. But the depth of his presence, Ron, I have never been with anything before or since that powerful. Not even at the Ramana Ashram or at the, 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 the mountain, Arunachala, for sure. I mean, the Arunachala mount, mountain was like, you know, it's the source of the Shakti. But there was something about Papaji's teaching that he took Advaita Vedanta and Ramana Maharshi's teaching, because that was his guru, yep. and he updated them for us in a way that was fun and relevant and innocent and compassionate while at the same time, ruthless, completely ruthless yeah. for anybody's story or ego. And and he could, he was an eight in the Enneagram, right? He could really come down hard on you too, if he wanted to, and he did. Old white guy, another old white guy coming down hard on people, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but those are all just the form. That's why I was saying, you know, his laughter, don't uh, drop in what's underneath that. If you can, I don't know if it plays over YouTube, but when I was sitting with him, he didn't give me any juice. He <coughs> didn't bring me to the front of the room to answer my letters. He just would answer them right back. You know, I didn't get the, the engagement with them that I see other people have. I wanted it. My ego wanted it. He ignored me. He ignored many men like me. Uh, from the West. He had a great device of doing that. And then finally, he rewards you when you humble yourself enough. And, he, and then he gave my bless his blessing for me to share satsang, which was still a little bit of my ego wanting to serve, like there was an other that I was serving, which is no longer the case. But I would sit in the satsangs, Ron, and go in. So I I didn't really fall in love with his form the way many of my other Papaji devotee friends did, and maybe Alan did with uh, with uh, Ramesh. I fell in love with the formless. Yeah. I fell deep into stillness every satsang, uh, and I didn't even get attached. I left. I went to Rishikesh, you know, to work with the children. I worked with the uh, orphan children in uh, in uh, Rishikesh, and. Uh, that was uh, when, when, when I came back to extend my visa, Papaji, I was sitting in the front row and David Godman, who had written the book about Ramana, and then he wrote Papaji's three volume biography. Beautiful set of books. ever happened. Yeah, beautiful set of books. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and, and David was, who's a beautiful man too, who lives in Ramana, who lives in Arunachala in Tiru in India. He was reading the book, a very shy fellow, and there were 300 people in the room, and Papaji was giving him juice. Papaji had had a car accident, so he wasn't reading letters and engaging with people. He was just sitting there meditating, and David was reading from the book before it was published, and Papaji was looking at David, and Prasad was sitting behind him. And suddenly, Papaji's focus went from David to Prasad, and Prasad's eyes, everything turned to white. Everything disappeared. So the look that I've been trying to get from him for months, he finally gave it to me almost by accident. That's the best story I can tell you, you know? And I've told that story and then edited it out a few times because I don't want to tell it in the context of where people aren't hearing it from the deepest place possible. Yeah. But beautiful. everything turned to light and that's when I disappeared. And I didn't have a need to engage with him personally, even though I did a few times, for sure, at his house and stuff. It was, and I'm so grateful for that, that I didn't identify with his personality. People would say, I want to be with Papaji. I want to be, and I said, I don't want to be with Papaji. I want to be Papaji. And that's what happened because yep. I yep. wasn't outwardly focused in duality with Papaji as a form his formlessness, especially when he dropped his body a year or two later, just has been with me ever since. Beautiful. I am with it. Yep. Beautiful. Yep. I have a question for both of you. <clears throat> so you mentioned earlier that the guru is dead. 
more or less. I mean, the term and people, especially in the West. Yeah, that style. Okay? That style. Yeah. So what would you consider the new style? Because even in my life, I kind of gravitated initially to a Yogananda, who was something that uh, I aspired to be when I, when I was first introduced. <coughs> like that state of awareness was a possibility. Um, so what's the new style with the millennials and all the seekers that are coming up now? And this is for both of you. What's the new style going to look like? The new style of being a guru? The, well, the new style of teaching, you know, the, the ultimate pure awareness, non-duality. Sp- yeah, the new style of spiritual teaching? Yeah. Well, for me personally, Ron, I had this realization 10 years ago when I opened my church. And I would sit in the room... Well, I, on the Sunday, I would give a talk from emptiness, the same way I'd give a talk at the uh, satsang. Correct. And that's where Prasad's genius comes through. It just comes through. And you know, that's why I should probably do a podcast. But uh, when we do the small groups, like the Wednesday nights, you know, we were, we were following the format of a church, but it was a non-dual church where I said, this is for those who don't worship God outside themselves, but see themselves as the source of who we are. And that's what it was called, the source. So on Wednesday nights, we do a small group with 30 people, young people mostly, millennials. And I discovered that my more powerful satsang was when I would be in silence and holding the space for them to share satsang, the way I'm doing with you right now, Ron the way Alan does with you. So for you to, you know, so that's the advanced, the new style of spiritual teaching in my mind. It's more peer oriented, almost like a support group. But my job is to hold the space that if a concept rises, I'll fucking shut that thing down. You'll get shut down before you realize it. And (coughs) Nisargadatta and Papaji and Ramana and any other old white guy, um, they we shut that shit down, yep. right? Yep. Because there's no room for it in satsang. It's a concept. And so if you're going to be bringing concepts in, it's not satsang anymore. Right, it's done. So I would moderate, but I would give space for them to facilitate themselves. So I think that's the new, the new model. Yeah. Yeah. For, so, um, for, for, but for, you still need a guide. Yeah, Go for, ahead. No, I would say for me... It was the same thing in a way because with Osho, that was where I was in love. You know, I was in love with Osho. I just, that was a, it was the first time in my life I'd had that. My grandfather, my grandfather than Osho. I mean, it was, these are these, these are these kinds of in love. You know, by the time I got to Ramesh, I I was, I was baked. It was done. Um, I, I had read Ramesh. I'd been with Prasad and exploded. I wanted to go see Ramesh, but it exploded before I got there. And I remember when I walked in, Ramesh looked up and said, why would somebody like you come? Like, what, what are you doing here? You know? And I just told him, I said, I always wanted to see you. So he was more of a mentor to me. But what he did, in my mind, of all of the folks that we're talking about, being Nisargadatta's extension, as it, as it were, he, he was pure clarity. That was his style. So you didn't fall in love with Ramesh. I mean, that'd be like, you know, falling in love with a, you know, you know, with a butcher cutting meat and having your hand on the table. You're like, no, 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 no. I mean, you know, Ramesh was all about clarity. Then that was all he was about. And, 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 and when, and when you were with him, the, the, the non, uh, the, the non-boundary, the boundaryless essence of that, but in a clarity way, right? It, 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 it wasn't the. It wasn't the heart piece that you, I had with Osho. It was just pure clarity. And what I could see in that is exactly what Prasad is saying, which is the who you are as you are, whatever it is, as consciousness lives you, then folks are going to find you where you where you are with, within that particular flow, whatever it happens to be. And where they're at. That's right. right. So to this day, I mean, you and I do this podcast. We're sitting here with Prasad. Amazing experience. You know, and the reality is I still have three or four things I'm doing still coming at me from the corporate world where where people are trying to understand how on that terrain, right, that the, the arising of consciousness is happening. And so, well, who else would know that but somebody who lived on that terrain for a lifetime? So, 
I, I, there's an obviousness to why it is that keeps coming in this particular direction. And I can tell you this, I tried really fucking hard to never go back into the corporate world. Didn't work so well, but that was what I, but that's where, that, that's where it was. And Ramesh would have said, you know, clarity, dude, just follow, let the clarity pull you through whatever, whatever's there. That's the new teacher. So, so I would say for me, and I'm guessing Prasad, um, a lot of people are looking for whatever it is they're looking and, 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 and most of them miss, you know, they walk right by Prasad or me or whoever, because what they're looking for doesn't include some, you know, some old dude who spills food down his front or whatever it is, you know, that the person that this body mind does as it moves along. Fair enough. You know, or they're not serious. There's like that. so many yep. non-serious spiritual seekers. Yep. So when they meet someone like a Prasad, I'm scary for people. Yep. You know, one of my one of my new age teacher friends, uh, who's also a rapper, a very cool guy. He'd be cool on your show for sure. Awesome. Um, he talks to, and he looks to me as a mentor, you know. That's the thing. I mentor very cool influencers. Yep who have their own followings, but they're not spiritual teachers. They're pop singers, rappers, writers, podcasters. You know, it's like, I feel like I get my hands in that way and influence the influencers. And in, and in the um, West, how else could it happen, right? In other words, you you, yeah. you, you do the guru dance in L.A. and you're, you know, you're going to be kind of alone. There's no, there's no, there's nothing in that, right? And if you're living and in that, L.A. That's what I naively thought I could do with movies, yeah. uh, but I was naive. The yeah. business of getting the movie made is so many obstacles. But if you do succeed through grace, then it has a, a way of impacting mainstream Correct. pop culture. Uh, and so it's like, yes, do I have that interest to influence? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's what any spiritual teacher does, but am I going to like put my energy into increasing my Instagram numbers? No, probably not. You know? Yeah. Do I do TikTok? No. You know, it's like after a while you realize this whole social media situation, again, three old white guys, uh, you know, is ridiculous. Yeah. And they are everyone, including me, when I'm doing the scrolling, we are enraptured by our own algorithms. Yes. And for those listening, if you don't yes. know that there's an algorithm that presents what advertisements you watch on your social media based on your history. Um, know that that model of algorithms is coming from consciousness, that there's the great algorithm of consciousness that is making our lives appear as they do. Yep. The thoughts we hold in our consciousness, the memories we remember, the for unforgiveness, the places where we don't forgive, the places we're stuck. And then you see people like are living their hell. People are literally living on earth in hell. Yep. They have created hell on earth. It's part of their karma, part of their growth, their learning lesson, whatever. But I believe that it's unnecessary, that you don't have to suffer to wake up. You just have to stop. Stop doing whatever you're doing right now. Be still and don't let your mind grab your awareness your attention keep your attention focused on nothing and breathe and let that emptiness grow let that stillness expand and disappear into it don't have a future forget about the past and disappear into that eternal now and watch what happens that's yep. it yep that's and that's what i said that's the simplicity there it is Right. There's no maps. There's no, you know, ascension happening anywhere or any of that. I mean, all of the all of the kind of jargon that you see, it, the simplicity of awakening. I mean, what you've always been is what you always will be. And so so guess what? That's why there is no awakening. Right. Right. Adam? right. There isn't. I mean, Papa G no. would say Papa G would say that bondage is illusion. Yeah. So the idea of getting free yep. is also an illusion. Yep. That's the high teaching of non-duality well, that a lot of these people don't want. They want to be out there do processing exactly. and, well, and, and God itself is a concept. Of course. 
And 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 the thing is, is that the I'm enlightened thing. I mean, that's why you see the teachers kind of when you when somebody says, "Are you enlightened?" I mean, you talk talk about a slippery kind of a question. You know, think about that for a minute. You know that. Well, only the mind can get enlightened. That's right. You see. Yeah. So the mind, if you identify with your mind, you can say, yeah, I'm, I'm enlightened. enlightened. Exactly. And and that means that your yeah. mind has been purified a lot. Maybe yeah. you've done a lot of Vipassana. Yeah. Or maybe, you know, you 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 don't uh, engage in your desires. And yep. But until you drop the mind, and as Ramana pointed us to, it is simply the I thought. So you start with That's your right. identity. Yep. And I, I used to do this with people back in the day, and I still do it with myself. No identity. And it's so great because everyone's getting into trouble with their identities now. Yep. And there's so much yep. social media control and canceling and this, that, and the other thing. I have no opinion anymore. I can talk to a right-wing conservative or, or a left-wing liberal. I can talk to an atheist or a Christian. Yep. Now we are, I'm answering your question from the beginning, Alan. Yep. This is what happened when I fully woke up is that I can talk to anybody yep. because I'm not invested anymore in this point of view yep. in any way. Yep. But this consciousness sees it all. I promise you, yep. I see both sides. You know, when people flip out about Donald Trump, I just giggle to myself. Yeah, yeah, of you course, know? of course. It's like such a program they're uh, in. They're yep. a little hamster running in their wheel, yep. doing exactly what they're yep. supposed to be doing, hating Donald Trump. Like, that's the big problem of the whole world. <coughs> yep. You know, no, yep. no, there's a lot more. It starts with you. It yep. starts with your brain, your mind, your judgments yep. that are projected onto this Donald Trump character. You know, it's like it all starts with us. And if as long as we pay attention there, then the world is well, going to be fine. So if anything to help wake people up, Ron, is to help people take full responsibility for the reality. Yep. That's something I like doing. Yep. That's something that's doable. Therapists can help people do that. <coughs> that's the first step. Yep. If you don't take full responsibility for your reality and you think it's happening to you, there's no awakening yep. possible. Yep. And then also, uh, Alan, I would like to explore with you the whole idea of non-doing. The non yep. there is no doer. That's okay. Right. So when you wake up, who wakes up? There is no one to awaken. That's right. It's no you're nobody. So there's no non-doer. Yep. And I wrote about it a little bit in my book, I think, or maybe that ended up edited as a blog. I can't remember. But I want to hear you guys weigh well, in on that because for the listener to understand what it is to for non-doing, what non-doing means. It, it's related to non-dual for sure. Of course. And, uh, and I'll just and say there it. is no doer, so there's nobody to wake up. I'll just say a quote from Buddha and then you can okay. take off. So so Buddha's quote is events happen, things are done, but there's no doer thereof. So And that's correct. That's right. And 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 the Sarga So uh, what I'm what I'm interested in is both your opinion of how it figures in in the awakening process, and being a teacher and whatever but spiritual path, blah blah blah. Well, I, you know, for me, I mean, it's funny. I tell the story. I there is a really funny story, and I don't I don't know if Prasad has ever dialed in on this, but you know, we we were sitting in a in a satsang, um, you know, way, way before kind of the event that, that occurred for me occurred. And Prasad was talking about, well, you know, in California, you know, they're, you're going to have somebody who's going to be rolling up to 405 and they're going to awaken. And so son of a bitch, if you know, that's exactly, that's, that was my story. I'm on the way to a business meeting and all of a sudden the entire world just takes a shift. It's done. You know, perceiving becomes what Nasargadatta would have called apperception, right? Perceiving with no perceiver. And, and it was so obvious, but in that, particular opening the other really obvious thing was that there was um no necessity to put forth any effort for the activity of doing to happen it just it was just obvious that was what was going on and that's always been obvious that particular piece is is has been there from that moment on and so it's a um it's just the natural state of the dream that's in front of us living itself into existence. That's what the algorithm of consciousness lives the dream into place. And, 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 and you 
as the eternal uh, perceiver, right? And and when I say you, there's no you. The it's not the body mind. It's 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 you, all of you, what you have always been. Pure awareness, right? So you remember your That's five it. your five year old birthday party, your twenty year old birthday party, your eighty year old birthday party, and guess what? There's a you that was at each of those, right? That's you. That's the that's and that's it. That's done. Zero done. And so so to me, I mean, it was it was the the and I was a big image guy. So when when you know Ramesh would say, hey, you know, when you try to look holy, you, you know, there's still someone trying to look something look like something. It do, it doesn't, you know. So so and and that pulled the plug on that kind of illusion, as it were. And then, of course, the next thing that happened was this opening where all of it's just simply living itself. And, and so that's my perception. You know, that's, how I would, that's how I would phrase it and I would, and, and, and I would hold it. There's, it's, it's, it's efforting with no effort, you know. Um, that, that, that's it. Yep. Effortless grace is what I call yep. it. But that's it. It's the, it's the effortless. Yep. Which is allow, which is allows us to see the non-doing. Yep. Yeah. Because it's still happening. Right. Con conscious. There's just no one making effort. Yeah. Consciousness is. And as Osho yeah. would say, it's happening by itself. That's right. The That's grass exactly. grows by itself. That's right. Now, for me, <clears throat> I haven't made that transition, so I can't give that perspective on the 405. But I have my own perspective, and um, so when out when I. When Alan was teaching me in the beginning, and then I got a hold of certain concepts and the ultimate concept that we're nothing and that there is no doer, then I immediately shut down everything that I thought I was doing. I was doing some teaching before, <clears throat> but I was leading nobody. I wasn't, there was going to be no liberation in anything that I shared. It was all going to be shadow work or this or that, you know, just helping people through things. And um, so then I shut everything down, and then I happened to have some physical elements that forced me to not move. And um, my biggest experience of, of not doing anything was when I was first talking to Alan. I was living in Las Vegas, and he was introducing me the idea of possibly moving to Hawaii. And so I started gradually just moving into, let me inquire about shipping my car. Let me do that. What about rentals? Next thing you know, I felt like I had a rocket in my ass. And, and I, I was being moved. And, and I remember having a conversation going, okay, okay, I'm going to check plane flights. <laughs> you know, it was like I was being moved. And it was completely out of my control. A month later, I was living here. You know, <coughs> uh, a month and a half after I met Alan, I was preparing to come, and and I didn't feel I had any any control over it whatsoever. That's it. You know, uh, listening to you, you asked me you know, about my experience with Papa G, and I I kind of had to dig into my past to come up with an answer that I have given before. Um, but it's almost irrelevant because it's the past. And listening to you talk about your past, I invite you to just be aware not to wear that in any way, the, how you came to this, how you met Alan. I have just realized that, again, it's only the now, and it's not even like Eckhart Tolle, power of now, which is such an ego uh, title. That's yep. why it was a bestseller, because the ego wants to have power. Yep. You know, I mean, come on. The truth is, there is nothing. There is no time. There is no past, no future, no present, no birth, no death, no body, no form. All of that is just a dream that we're having right now. And to keep our attention on that, which is does not come and go, which is <coughs> not temporary, which is not an illusion. There is no wife. There are no children. You know, it's like all of that, those things that are important to you guys, that's the place you can get hooked if you allow yourself. But if you stay free, which I imagine you're doing, Alan, you can have much more fun with these family members. And you are the elder grandpa kind of energy. 
So, you know, they need to just like let you be yourself and you're letting them all be themselves. And that's the key. Just be yourself and let everyone else be themselves and watch what happens. Yep. It's not about changing, improving, controlling, yep. directing, uh, imp improving. Yep. Or, or, as, or as Prasad used to say, what wants to happen? <laughs> what I used to say? What wants to happen? It was the, it was, it the was, it was, I, it was a beautiful, other, beautiful, yeah, beautiful pointer. What wants to happen? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and, uh, the other line that came while you were talking, um, uh, Ron is never mind your mind. That was a big saying I used to say. Yep. So it means whatever. Oh, Marianne Williamson just sent me a, uh, a text. Uh, and I was going to mention her earlier when you talked about spirituality. Here's somebody who's spiritual. She's non-dual, but she's only as awake as she is. But, you know, Course yep. in Miracles is completely non-dual. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Yeah, very familiar. But yeah, it's Course a, in Miracles same. is, yeah. is yeah. a kind of, huh? Yeah, I, 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 that was one of the things I worked with a lot before I went to, went to be yeah, with Osho. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. You and yeah. I both did. Yep. Early days, yep. we both did. Yep. So that was a genius channel, whatever the hell that <laughs> Insane, was. Insane, yeah. But it was non-dual Christianity. So Marianne is the foremost expert on non-dual, I mean, on um, uh, Course in Miracles. Yep. So, of course, she's influenced by non-dual. But is she? I doubt she'll ever hear this show, but maybe. <laughs> I love you, Marianne. <laughs> uh, how much do you believe that this reality is true? Mm. How much are you invested in changing the minds and the hearts and the souls of other people? How much do you think you can make change in the world and that you'll be taken seriously? I love her. Yeah. You know, right. she's like, right. I, I should do Marianne Williamson in drag. <laughs> that's, that's it. I just realized my new drag character. Well, you just did. It's it. going to be yeah. Marianne Williamson. Yeah, that's awesome. I love her. I want to awesome. be her. Awesome. And I think she's got cojones. To yep. be running for president again. Yep. Good for her. Yep. But the reason I mention her, Ron, is because she's spiritual. She's a spiritual teacher. She makes her living at it much more than the three of us yep. uh, do. You know, with all due respect to what levels we do, mm -hmm. she's she's made millions from it. Okay? But I've also seen her lose her shit and alienate a lot of people around her. But so didn't I when I was running the church that she would come and do her campaigning act. That's how I saw her up close. I've known her since the 80s. Um, I don't I decided I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be stressed out trying to manage micromanage people who are part of a spiritual community or ashram. I mean, I'm sure it's stressful for Muji, but. I realized, and I wanted to share this to the listeners, that stress is an illusion. Yep. And stress comes from when the mind rises and minds what is happening. So that's why I always say, never mind your mind. Just let it well, be. If you mind what's happening and you add time to the factor, now you're racing against time to change reality to fit your preconceived concept. That is the recipe for stress. Beautiful. I don't. I don't know if you remember, but about two or three years ago, you know, Muji, um, there was a uh, some the, the typical, the typical uh, claim of of you know sexual whatever um, you know within his grouping, and 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 that whole organization. You know, they, they couldn't have, you know, moved faster or with more force because they were so worried about their image, right? There was, it, was, it, was an Im, it was an image control, the kind of thing you'd see in Hollywood. And I can remember thinking to myself, my God, you know, what a, what a colossal fucking waste of time. You know, I mean, I mean the, it, it, just, it just seemed to me like, like a, a, a non-dual teacher, you know, organizing a world where you needed to protect an image. Like what kind of a what kind of a world is that? That that that's got to be probably one of the most idiotically stupid versions of non-duality I've ever experienced. I mean, I mean, think about it. It's 
It's you know you know who is this I that, and what is this image that we're that's being protected? You know, I mean, and it just seemed to me like of all people in the world that Muji ought to be able to see through that one. It's like whatever. You know, I, I mean, there's that beautiful story, that Zen story, you know, about the the girl in the village that says, "Hey, the wise man down on the corner, he's she'd fathered, a, she she had a child, and she didn't want to disclose her b- boyfriend, and so she blames the the little wise man down on the corner, who he says, "Oh, that's my kid, great." You know, some years later, when she confesses that it was actually the young guy, the, a block the other way, um, she sits, she comes down to get her child, and, and he goes, "Okay, great. Well, I, I you know, here 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 it is, whatever, done." And I just thought it was just always when I when I saw Muji and all this kind of defending, it just made me kind of chuckle. You know, who, 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 Muji needs to be defended, really. <laughs> you know, well, just, that seems to come from the investment financially, maybe. That's in, in, that's where it lives in in the yeah, podcast yeah, or yeah. in the image. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, he's an he's an influencer and he's got thousands of likes and what all of that crap, right? So, so our world basically prays, if you will. Um, the egoic version of our world preys on the fact that you know people want that to be, you know, expressed. You know, they they you know it was funny when I wrote my last book. I wrote a book what a year and a half or two ago called Pointers to Awakening. And uh, I don't know if you know Lauren Roche or not, big meditation teacher in L A. But he he had his uh, he had his agent call me, and I and I actually the editor I used was was connected to that agent. And the first thing that they asked me was, you know, well, what is your social media following? What are your numbers? And I and I remember I remember on the phone call, I'm like, oh, God, I wrote this. I, I've written this amazing book. This this book just arose. It's a it, it was a beautiful book. And um, and and I remember her telling me, she says, No, look, you don't get it. We don't really care how good the book is. What we want to know is what social media platform do you have that we can leverage. And I thought to me, what an insane world where you don't care what's in the book, but what you care about is what the social media platform is so you can leverage the book into whatever that is. And that's really the world we're living in. That says it all, Alan, about our current state of affairs. And it gets worse. My friend who's the pop singer, he and his band, um, they were told that they have to start to promote on TikTok. Because that's now the standard. The way yep. in the 80s, MTV was how you launched a song. Yep. Now it's TikTok. It's not even Instagram. Yep. It's not even Snapchat. It's TikTok. Oh, and then we hear at the same time, TikTok is, o- TikTok is owned by China. Of course. China is using their algorithms to educate their Chinese students. Yep. But the same algorithms are dumbing down Western American kids. Yep. Uh, you know, it's like all of these traps are yeah. existing in this reality. Yeah. You can die at any point, car accident, falling off a cliff, being murdered, being in the wrong place at the wrong time, getting a disease. No matter how healthy you are, how you eat, exercise, everything, you can still get cancer. Yep. You know, it happens. So you can't live worried about the future and what's going to happen to you. You can't mind any of it. You just stay quiet. If you want to make something happen, have a clear intention, take the step. Like you guys made this, uh, this, uh, non-dual food truck podcast. Yeah. You had to have an intention and then it got delayed. There are obstacles. You have to stay with it. By the way, Ron, I want to suggest uh, a, a new item for the menu when you're ready to add items. Zero hero. Oh, I like that one. A zero hero. That's nice. Very nice. Coming back to zero. Very nice. So that's nice. You know, everyone's afraid to be a big zero. Everybody's trying to be somebody. And that's where they're in bondage. Because the minute you're trying to be someone, have a certain amount of followers on Instagram, have a certain amount of influence. Like I said earlier, I don't mind influencing people because I know I I am tapped into truth. But I'm not going to chase that opportunity to influence people. Yeah. I'm not going to like have to. I'm not going to even play that game. I admire the old school teachers who just sit in their living room. I would do that if I had a living room, but I don't. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a no, I'm a, a sadhu. I just, you know, move around from cave to cave. But people like Wayne Lickerman and uh, many others who just have small groups 
for years, years. 25, 30 years. Yep. Whoever wants to come, five to 10 people. I didn't like that. I like the bigger groups. Yep. The energy was juicier. Yep. But if it gets too big, then you're like, oh, show or whatever. Then the drama happens. Yep. So it's a, you know, it's a fine I can, line. What I, did you want to say, Ron? I got a question for you. So one of the questions I have, and it kind of uh, relates to what you were just talking about a few minutes ago. So what some tips... What are some tips you can give listeners for overcoming fear, especially fear of death and, and oh, things yeah. you were talking about? Maybe you can expand yeah. on that a little bit. I would. And if we're going to wrap up soon, I wanted to make this point is the fear of death <coughs> is what is driving everybody to get likes on Instagram, to yeah. be get approval from your loved ones, from your family, you know, everything that's driving the ego is running from death. It appears at times that you're running towards life, but you're not because you're running away from life to avoid death. Um, and even when people are depressed and feeling suicidal, they're feeling that way because of their feelings around death. Once you embrace death as part of life, as just another moment, just like laying down your to go to sleep at night. You don't know if you're going to wake up and you go to a whole nother reality. And then you come back to what appears to be the same reality, but it only is because we're bringing our mind to it. If it was a different reality, you would lose your mind. So only those who are ready to like live on that vibration, which I am, I don't mind moving through different realities. So I've loosened the egoic knot to this particular reality through my friends, letting go of my family, not to say I don't love them and I'm going to see them in a couple of weeks because I'm passing through, but I don't have personal relationships, really haven't had them since I woke up in, in the 90s, but I have enjoyed beautiful, beautiful connections, heart connections with my own self in many forms. Mm. But the idea of a relationship or a goal or anything that's going to keep you tethered to this reality, to this body, I think is the antithesis of awakening. So for me, it's like freeing yourself from desire to avoid death, surrendering to the fact that this body is, to, is temporary. It's not even real. And allowing this life to happen the way you allow your dreams to happen, where you're simply witnessing them and not engaging so much. My mind always wanted to improve on what was showing up. You know, now I'm like, no, that's not the doorway. The doorway is being with what is and dropping underneath it before it and not taking that ride on that roller coaster. Mm -hmm. And just watching instead. And then see what happens. So death is just one of the drops in the roller coaster. Then your rebirth is when you go back up for another ride. So so <clears throat> that's a segue into the next question is, so those that want to be mentored or become students of yours, how would they be able to contact you? Um, well, through hopefully through your website, I mean, through your podcast or my website is prasadpaulduffy.com. Okay. P-R-A-S-A-D-P-A-U-L-D-U-F-F-Y. And my books are available there and some blogs and videos and whatever. So I would invite people to come yeah. to the website and they can email me from there. And you could always, you could always contact us at Nandua Food Truck. Um, Check the links below. Um, you'll see uh, Prasad's is there, but so is ours. So if you uh, if anybody wants to get a hold of Prasad, talk to us. I'll 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 get you to Prasad. I guarantee you. Prasad, it's been an amazing experience today communicating with you. Yeah. It's really beautiful. Yeah, you were on a roll. You did great. It was awesome. It was really beautiful. Love all your wisdom yeah. and um, just beautiful stuff. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. One love. Yep. Aloha. A lifetime of love, my friend. <laughs> so, I hope to see you soon in the I Big know. Island yeah, come. next year. Yeah, cool. Come visit. And this has been Alrighty. the non-food, the non-dual food, food truck. truck.
episode two. Yep. Um, check us out on our website. Yep. Non dual. Non dual food truck dot com. Non dual food yep. truck dot com and um, Facebook we'll page, uh, Instagram, uh, TikTok. Right. So we're we it, it's all out there. I mean, you just you, you know I don't know. I, we probably don't. I don't know how many likes we have, but hey, it's well, out there. One or two. <laughs> Whoever needs to find it will find they it. They will. <clears throat> they will. Have a beautiful day. Right. Much love. You too. Aloha, Baba. Peace. Mm.